Since the birth of powered flight in 1903, men dreamt of machines that could take off and land vertically. Fixed-wing planes needed large airfields and long runways to get airborne and to land. In wartime, these runways are prime targets for enemy attacks. One of the ongoing difficulties with using air power in aviation tactically is that you've got to have airstrips and airports, and these are tremendous areas of vulnerability. You've got to free yourself. Vertical takeoff would eliminate the need for vulnerable runways, but how to achieve it? How do you launch a lump of static metal into the air without the massive run-up and thrust used by conventional planes? The answer lay in rotary flight. As far back as 400 BC, Chinese children understood the basic principles of rotary flight. The Chinese top consisted of feathers at the end of a stick, which was rapidly spun between the hands to generate lift and then released into free flight. By the early 20th century, feathers were out, blades were in, as inventors began applying the principle of rotary flight to machines made of wood, metal, and canvas. In 1907, Frenchman Paul Cornu became the first man to take off vertically. The first person to get off the ground in what we refer to as a helicopter was a, a French bicycle maker named Paul Cornu. He uh, designed a double rotor helicopter with a 45 horsepower engine that uh, ascended vertically. He's pretty well accepted as the first person to, to fly in a helicopter. Cornu only spent 20 seconds in the air, but in that short time, he'd proven that vertical takeoff was achievable. The next step would be to find a way to stabilize the airframe in flight. One of the first problems was the helicopter's tendency to flip over as soon as it moved forward through the air. As it moves forward through the air, the rotor that's going forward sees the air moving much faster than the rotor that's coming aft. The result is that that side of the rotor that's going forward creates more lift than that side of the rotor that's moving to the rear. That would mean that the whole rotor would tilt to the left whenever the aircraft moved forward. In the 1920s, a Spaniard, Don Juan de la Sierva, solved the problem. In previous rotary experiments, the blades were rigidly fixed to the rotary shaft, but Sierva evened out the lift by connecting the blades to the shaft with a hinge. He discovered that if you allowed the blade that was going forward to flap upwards and the blade that was coming back to flap downwards, then you would even out the lift from one side of the rotor to the other so that the aircraft would fly along relatively in level flight. By using hinged rotor blades, Sierra had managed to maintain stable horizontal flight. However, his rotor craft, the autogyro, had failed the vertical challenge. The one fundamental problem they always had was that you could never, ever hover. Sierra's autogyro was basically a normal airplane without wings and rotor blades added instead. As the airplane propeller pushed the aircraft forward, the wind turned the rotor, producing lift. Because the rotor wasn't powered independently, it couldn't hover, and that meant it couldn't land vertically. But the new hinged rotor system had taken rotary technology one step closer towards the helicopter. 